we we loaded the second half of the season with sort of like the return of the Titans. So you have Georgina, you have Malcolm McDowell as Roger Menzies, you have Helena Bergman and Heidi Bergman. There's just a lot of uh, manipulations and power from the parents to the kids and from Gossip Girl to the kids. Nice to, to meet you finally after all of these. I, I grew up on the original Gossip Girl and now I'm essentially getting to relive it in a lot of ways through this new show and it's it's so entertaining. I've watched up to episode six, so this will go out after episode six and Georgina has always been one of my favorites and just to see just what she can do in one episode of the sequel series. Can you talk about like, was it always planned for her to be involved with the Gossip Girl storyline while you were doing season one? Or was it something that you guys came up with when developing season two? I knew when I pitched the show coming back that I wanted Michelle to come back. And Michelle and I have stayed in touch over the years. Like, you know, we'll like text each other, or DM each other like a couple of times a year. And so I, it was very important to bring her back. And so the the second that the show was greenlit, I reached out to her saying, I actually think she reached out to me, meaning she knew it was in process, but once the announcement came out, she was like, okay, when is, when, when is it happening? Uh, and we realized, you know, in talking, I said to her and talking to the writer's room that Georgina needed to make maximum chaos. And in order to do that, <laughs> to introduce enough of our characters first so you'd understand the stakes before she showed up. So she quickly understood that it would be best for her to wait till season two when she would have the maximum impact. And so we put Milo in season one and had these photos of Georgina just to remind the audience that she's never too far from our world. But we were going to wait until she was going to come back in, in this season. So. Uh, yeah, and it was great. I mean, it was good. I think it's right to wait. I think you just enjoy her all that much more. Oh, definitely. Because I could, like, as I was watching uh, four and five, I'm thinking, if this isn't Georgina on the other end of the phone, yes. I, I, there's something hella weird going on. But how much fun did you have telling her that? Oh, so in this in this sequel, yeah. the teacher is Gossip Girl. Because yeah. I love I love that there's like. Almost kind of like little, she kind of like breaks the fourth wall in the episode where like you know there's no way Dan could have been at all those places. Yes. So what was her, like? Do you, what was her reaction like when you told her? Well, she knew from the very beginning and she really liked it. I mean, I think everybody was on board to not repeat the original and make it who is Gossip Girl. It's we did that already and we got so much mileage out of it and it was time to do something new. So I think she really loved that, especially because if you recall in the first series, Georgina took Gossip Girl over for a time because she was like, I can do this better. And that's where her drive is coming from in this as well. So the idea that it wasn't a nameless, faceless thing or like a computer that she had to steal, which it was the first time around, this time around, she actually has a person that she's going to sort of aggravate and, you know, interrogate and uh, sort of push to do things. And that just she likes she likes an adversary. It was it was the right way to go. So Michelle was really excited about that. And also Michelle and Tavi are just they just really complement each other well it's really funny to watch them go at each other and to be together so it took a while for me to realize okay so she kidnapped this woman takes her to dan and serena's place out of all places in new york and um, i could also i also could say was that the dress that kate wakes up in that's supposed to be serena's dress from season one right that's oh yes she, uh, in fact uh kate is in two different outfits in that scene and both of them are serena's <laughs> as, as as Georgina does. Yes, Georgina's playing dress up with Kate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah um her, her like, yeah. <laughs> that was gonna ask, like, because um, because you know, this is the I think the, the first time this season we've heard about Dan and Serena, also them having a kid, because I was like, oh my god, what would their kid be like today? The the more we keep hearing about what yes. all these other characters are up to, like, are we getting closer to maybe seeing oh gosh, I, I certainly hope so. With Dan and Serena, you know. Uh, it was just fun. I just loved knowing that Georgina hadn't left them alone. Like, I'd say probably one of my most favorite Georgina monologues that we've ever had is her in this episode talking about the ways in which she's become their ghost in their house and all of the specialists they've had to hire <laughs> to try to figure out what's going wrong with their house, but it's Georgina. So I know I couldn't show Dan and Serena, obviously, in that, but we definitely, there are characters that we you know, hope to bring back. And if the series continues, we have every intention to. I think it's really good to have sort of one or two returning people per season. Uh, yeah. And yeah, but also Georgina is never too far away. Yeah, because I figured it because I, I had to go back and rewire the series. So now because I remember 
I thought they were on good terms. They were. Uh, they, and, they and then were. they weren't. <laughs> time, yeah, exactly. Time has, I decided to to sort of change that because I kind of feel like I don't understand how Georgina could ever stay on good terms with, terms with Envy for a while. However, Georgina and Blair ended on good terms, but that doesn't mean that she's done with Dan and Serena. She's probably still mad at Dan for the baby thing. And like, you know, there's, there's also like time has passed. Who knows what's yeah. happened? If you, uh, I'm not going to say, but like the writers, we, we came up with some pretty fun things about what happened in, in the interim, but I'm not going to spoil those in case they no, ever come out. I understand. No, I, well, some, something that I got a little excited about because I, we didn't see him, but we definitely heard Milo and like these two, I mean, Milo and Julia, we're going to see him together this season, right? Because I want to see what a chaotic mother not. and son. We are not, and we were supposed uh, to and really wanted to, but Ak- Aji, who plays Milo, is one of the leads of Apple's Invasion, which shoots in South Africa, and we could not make uh, our schedules work getting him from South Africa to New York in the time that we had. Because with COVID, there's this still with actors and on sets, there's quarantine, there's all of this stuff, and it couldn't, it didn't work. So they were actually supposed to be at the wedding together, but we couldn't, we couldn't do it. So instead, uh, he's Milo. and that's why there's the Russian model instead. Uh, which is funny. So, and that's Ashi on the phone. And what's so funny is Ashi's voice changed because I know. Up. And so we had to have this awkward moment where we were like, do we cast a voice that sounds like Milo from season one? Or do we, obviously, we obviously we would not, we didn't do that because we want to use Ashi because Ashi is Milo. But we just, I was nervous for a moment. That the audience wouldn't make the connection that that was Milo because his voice has changed. But it's more important to have Ashi than to make it sound like Blast. Is it is it very typical journalism of me to say that I thought initially, like, oh, is this ADR? Like, is this just temporary ADR before? Because I sometimes when we get screeners, you know, it's the yes, yes. No, so it's, I was like, it's, I'm like, I'm like he was just a little kid last I, year. I know, I know it's so crazy. But and also, by the way, I didn't know until we got his ADR. We got his we got his voice, and I was like, that's Ashi because no one had said that his voice is. <laughs> But I think it's great because that just means in season three, he's going to be a real teen and a real adversary for for the kids with Georgina. But yeah, uh, initially in the script, it was fun because Zoya asked Milo to be there, but Milo didn't want his mother to know he was there. And so there was an added complication of Milo hiding from Georgina. And there was a great moment, which unfortunately is gone, but I'm glad because we couldn't do it, where they bump into each other and and he's like, I want. I don't want to spoil, but he's like, "Did you do that?" And she's like, "Did you do that?" And they're like, both are proud of each other, and then they go to. Separate ways. And that was the only moment that they met. But yes, not to be. Oh my god! I right, well, see, well, speaking of season three, where wh- do you have any updates? Like, are we? Is it looking good? No idea. No idea. I all all I know is that you know the landscape is shifting pretty rapidly, and Gossip Girl is you know. Uh, a very expensive show. I'm very grateful for the ability to have it be as expensive as it is, look as great as it is, use the locations and the clothes and get the actors we get, like all of that. But it does make it, uh, you know, in today's new streaming economy, you know, I don't know. I think it's an uphill battle, but I'm very proud of the season. I think it's better than the last. I think it stands up against old Gossip Girl. I think the characters really come into their own if this is the end myself and all the eps and all the writers and the cast would be so sad because we all believe there is so much left in these characters but at the same time season two does you know i don't know i can't i don't know i I would look i would hate it if this was the end i have no i have no idea i wish i had an answer for you i think we'll know sometime in january does it can you say if the season ends like with if this if if god forbid if something were to happen is it open ended, or do we kind of end on cliffhangers? We're like, oh, now we really need a season three. Unfortunately, or fortunately, we end with cliffhangers. But, but they're cliffhangers in which I think if it were to end, you could make connections as an audience member that you'd be like, oh, okay, I I get that. I don't know how to explain it. You'll have to wait till you see it. Yeah. But, but I think that I think. It's not like, oh no, Chuck has been shot. Is he going to die? Like, it, nothing's <laughs> like that. It's just sort of more like, oh, wait. The, it was more, I guess I put it this way it was setting up stories for season three. And I think your brain can fill in where the stories would go. Hmm. It isn't like somebody's fate is hanging in the balance. Yeah. That was, that was a long ass summer when Chuck got shot. Yes, um, I, I just made it, I made a deal with myself in doing this version that 
often streaming shows there's a year between seasons it's you can have chuck get shot in may and because you're going to have the answer in three months so like that can work but you wouldn't have chuck get shot and leave him for 14 months which is the duration that has happened between season one and two because that would be like what so so no, nothing as huge as that happens but uh but some but some other great stuff happens yeah it'll be sad if it's the end because we definitely did not plan for that well, I'm hoping hoping for season three because I I've been enjoying the second season and one of the things that I've really enjoyed is you know the kind of I still I feel there's a still struggle between Monet and Julianne. Is it fair to say that the war is definitely not over yet between them? Yes. Well, I'd say that Monet's aspirations to be on top and find a way to do that are not over. Julian versus Monet is sort of over, but also not really because Monet in her trying to go after things is going to go after other people that Julian cares about. But I'd say there's a fun, I mean, you've made it to episode six, I guess it happens in episode seven. Uh, but I think that gossip girl realizes that Julian and Monet was a really good story, but there might be a better story utilizing. Like, I don't want to give too much away. There might be a better story, and then you'll see what happens. But Monet is like, you've seen through six. Like, she's still trying. She's still trying to get there. She's still in a battle with her mother, which doesn't stop. And there's some really, really great stuff between them coming up. Yeah, so, no, it was it was funny when she was, like, trying to be nice at the kiss of the lips party. I'm like, girl, yeah. come on. <laughs> come on. Well, that- we, have like a, we have a very strong multi-season arc planned out for Monet so it wasn't it's not like she's done by any stretch of the imagination so but that's but that's why I love so much about this iteration of the show is that nothing really is that black and white with these characters is that like you know you can love all I mean even though Kate is someone that we should be questioning a lot you can kind of see a purpose of what she's doing, but she's doing it in all the wrong ways. Possible. Exactly. And I think that's what's really fun is that in the first season, I think people were really not sure how they were supposed to feel about Kate. And they, they I think they thought that we didn't know or or we had made a choice. But the truth is we wanted it to be, if you hated her, great. And if you agreed with her, great. And so I think in this season, we literally just unharnessed her. So you really, I think f- she does bad. She she you do hate like she's doing the wrong stuff but she's she is motivated by the right reasons but that doesn't make it right at all in fact that makes it worse oddly in a weird way Mm. Uh, i don't know i really just love the moral complexity that the audience is a part of in that storyline and i think it actually goes to some very surprising places i mean not just georgina but there's some other pretty big stuff that's about to happen including georgina i would say but uh, yeah because that's what because the thing is with georgina you Eventually, everyone gives in to her in some way or capacity. What does that look like for Katie, if you can tease something about uh, that? I can, tease, I can tease that Georgina, that if Kate resists Georgina again, Kate, a, a very bad fate is going to befall her. And so she has no, she can't resist Georgina. But if you can't resist Georgina, and Georgina in episode six had just gotten started, it's this weird thing where if you say no to Georgina, you may lose your head. And if you say yes to Georgina, you may lose your head anyway because Georgina is going to make you put your head in the guillotine. So uh, I think she's just in for the ride of her life. And she definitely, nobody escapes unharmed. Uh, yeah. I can't, I don't want to say any more because seven is a, a big turning point. So Well, I definitely look forward to seeing the kids meeting her because like – the thing is, like Georgina, like she acts like a teenager in a lot of ways, still, which is still so funny. So I kind of just like, I mean, like if she and Monet went up and getting sort of, I, I thought, I think that could be hilarious, but also chaotic, which we, we, we love about her. Yes, um, well, I can't. I don't want to spoil anything, but I, but I definitely, uh, you'll definitely see some really fun stuff. Uh, well, before I let you go, uh, anything else you want to tease about the second half of the season, uh, which hopefully won't be the last, but, yes. you know, but what can you tease? I can tease that Julian, in her effort to always sort of rise above and do good, doesn't realize that actually she's crossed a line and she the line she crosses, she kind of can't come back from and she just goes further and further crossing it it's it's uh it's definitely sort of a dark night of the soul for julian and also uh i would say you know there's just really fun stuff like we we loaded the second half of the season with sort of like 
the return of the Titans. So you have Georgina, you have Malcolm McDowell as Roger Menzies, you have Helena Bergman and Heidi Bergman. There's just a lot of uh, manipulations and power from the parents to the kids and from Gossip Girl to the kids. And I think the, the best thing I can tease is that the kids get to a point where they're not going to take it anymore. And so uh, I'd say, you know, the, a world war begins. It's good. It's really big, really big end of the season. So, and then we go to Italy. So there's also, the, <laughs> we go to Italy. What, what, what a way, what a way to end the season. Like it's out. Yeah. Like, you know, cause I, cause I cover a lot of comic book stuff. So I'm thinking like, Oh my God, this is gospel girls. So war parent versus kids, whatever. And so on. But, uh, but thank you so much for your time today. I look forward thank to seeing you. the rest of the season and I'm hopefully we will talk again for season three. Cause I'm, I'm not ready to say goodbye to these characters. Neither am I. Neither am I. Thank you so much, Andy. Have a great holiday season. You, yeah. Happy holidays to you too.